I mean, I haven't really had your view of the, the first 100 days. Um, hasn't been great, has it? No, oh, I mean, I, I think that, <laughs> I mean, I can't, I'm, I'm squirming on their behalf, let's yeah. put it that way. Um, the, the, the truth of the matter is, is that every day that something atrocious is revealed, you do think, oh, my God, are they capable of governing the country? Right. And as I said, I, I said quite early on that I want a new government to be able to govern well because we're all citizens of this country. I'm not yeah. sectarian. I don't care who's doing it. I want it to work. But I think that we've seen a very glib um, attitude to our freedoms, some very worrying developments when it comes to free speech being undermined. Yeah. They're kind of rather bolshy uh, we're not having any culture wars around here. Those days are over. And yet they seem to launch a culture war every day. I mean, mm. these removals of the portraits are a perfect... Yeah, I mean, what's that all about? I mean, well, it, it's so performative, yeah. but it's so student union-like. Yeah. It's like I couldn't possibly be seen in the same room as somebody that might possibly be sullied by something from the past. And I, I, I tell you what's most insulting is that it really trashes British history by using uh, the alleged standards of today to show a kind of purity. Right. And we get so frustrated when we see those kids going into art galleries and throwing soup or mm. paint at famous paintings. But this is kind of like a grown-up equivalent. It We're is. just as contemptuous of art and of the symbols of historic um, uh, of our history that you really have no sympathy yeah. with it. But I, I tell you what the other thing is, even when they look like they're doing something that I might, as a bit of a lefty, think, oh, good, you know, workers' rights. And then you look at their workers' rights bill, the employment bill, and one of the things we've discovered over the weekend is that they're going to give employers responsibility if any of their employees are offended by third parties. Yes, and this is, is apparently going to be in hospitality as well. So if you're serving in a restaurant and you hear two people having a perfectly normal conversation, say you and I are out for dinner, um, and I say something that she doesn't like or he doesn't like, they report it to the uh, uh, the employer, uh, who then has to somehow recompense them for being offended. Yeah, it's the, it's the policing of banter. It's the intrusion into everyday life. And yeah. this is apparently to protect workers from being offended. And of all the, the protections that workers need, that is not one of them. No. In fact, it's a silencing charter. It's going to lead to uh, competitive grievances. In universities, one of the places where they've said, oh, well, we're going to trash and tear up the free speech bill that got passed mm. as an act, uh, had had royal assent. One of the first things they did was get rid of that. Well, this is additionally going to make matters worse for anybody in a university who for example invites somebody controversial somebody's going to get offended yeah. right? right so of course what they're going to do is they're not going to invite uh, external uh, speakers it's going to in other words clamp down on free speech having a drink in a pub you might offend someone invite somebody in to speak and some member of staff at a university could say i find that offensive yeah. they will therefore be able to sue and the employer takes responsibility it's atrocious. Mm, it's so mad, what I'm it? saying is, yeah, I'm saying in the nooks and crannies of this government, every time you look, they're assaulting our freedoms. But this, is, but this is why everything that they're doing appears to have some kind of ideological, you know, bent to it. You know, even going as far back as the first thing they did, which was to freeze the pensioners' fuel payment. You know, that wasn't about saving money because they're likely to save even less than they thought they were going to save, probably somewhere in the, somewhere in the, in the nether regions of 800, 900,000. It's not even going to be uh, 900 million. It's not even going to be a billion pounds they're going to save, right? Um, but they're doing it anyway, and they keep on the plan to do it because they want to sort of punish pensioners in some way, and they want everybody to believe that pensioners are all much better off than they are. Well, I think if you look at a lot of their decisions, you'll see that they kind of have this very chippy, what they think is going to be a popular go at, at people who are wealthy, so that you, you've just been having the conversation about eating and mm. private schools. You know that in their minds, this is why it's like student union politics, they think, oh... If we attack people who send their kids to private schools, that will be popular with the red wall yeah, voters. Right. If we attack those rich pensioners, they don't think of kind of people suffering with the winter fuel lines. They think, 
oh, there's all those kind of wealthy pensioners yeah. who would get this winter fuel allowance. And if we punish them, no one's going to mind. That's going to be very popular mm. as well. But in fact, what's happened is, is that they haven't thought through the consequences of their actions. And these things look petty, yeah. mean-spirited, and will have real material impacts and create hardship for tens of thousands, millions of people. So in, in fact, it's backfired on them. Yeah. Um, I, also, I also think, though, that they, they, as yet, have not done any substantive thing. They keep talking about, we're the change government. And apart from the embarrassment of their chumocracy of appointing their mates to jobs, yeah. of the, the, the passes for glasses and all that, in all seriousness, the things which we want them to do, the infrastructure growth, the plans for investment that they're talking about today, we see that even in those instances, it's far more talk than it is action. And your Cambridge, um, I love that that roundabout example. Right. Because you can say, well, we're going to build infrastructure. But if your infrastructure is full of all of these, oh, we've got to be good to cyclists, we've got to be good to, to pedestrians, we've got to punish the car driver and so on and so forth, you end up with building things which actually are going to hold back mm. growth, uh, not help it. It's absolutely extraordinary. Um, I'm going to ask you about reparations in a minute, but let me see if you recognise any of these names, right? Roger Cook, not the one you think. Peter Malinowskis, Jacinda Allen, Chris Minns, Jeremy Rockliffe or Steve Miles. Any idea? No, any no, six no clue. No clue. I feel like I'm doing a quiz that I'm doing badly at. No, sorry. Well, you wouldn't be expected to know who they are. These are state leaders in Australia, right? who are mostly from a left-wing party, who are refusing to meet the king, despite the fact that he's going to Australia for the first time as the king, uh, with cancer, no less, with his wife, the queen. Uh, they're all refusing to meet him on the grounds that, presumably, they haven't said it, but they've all got something better to do. But guess what? It's because of his links to, you know, what you might call the British Empire. Um, well, again, I, we keep I keep saying this, but... I make fun of student union politics because it's superficial and performative yeah. and it tick boxes all the way through. It seems that the Australian uh, left politicians are doing exactly the same. Um, by the way, you can be a very principled Republican and say we don't agree with the royal family. Yeah. You can even go and meet the king and have a completely sensible conversation with him about imperial uh, crimes of the past and yeah. empire if you want. But to kind of sulk and say we're not meeting you. That is pathetic. It is pathetic, isn't it? Absolutely nuts. But finally, I know you've probably got you've got your big Academy of Ideas weekend coming up this weekend. I know, yeah, we've got the Battle of Ideas Festival next weekend. So well, you should have uh, to give it a bit of a plug. Yeah, well, um, it's um, at Church House, nineteenth, twentieth of October. But the the slogan this year is conversations um, with the public uh, for the public in public, right. right? And it's very important because. The one group that's been kept out of all of these discussions by this new government is the public. Yeah. And people get so fed up of not having their concerns listened to. So we have a big festival in which everybody comes along and has their say. Brilliant. Um, so come along. And if they want to come along, how do they find it? Is it online somewhere? So it's at battleofideas.org.uk. Great concession ticket prices. We've got Julia Hartley Brewer this year. We've had Mike Graham uh, <laughs> in the past, Mike. Haven't we come we along, have. drop in. Uh, we've got over 400 speakers, I think, and 100 panel discussions. Yeah, it's a great so it's event. It's a great event for everyone. Yeah, it's brilliant.